Here we are. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Drea. Hi, Kate. Look, everybody. It is, we are live. Today is Wednesday, November 10th, and you're watching Bead Shop Live. And it's me, Kate, with this me, way. Drea. Me, you, Drea. Yes. Hello. Hello. We're going to have a good day today. It's going to, it's already a good day. Yeah, it's going to be fun times. I'm going to turn you up in my ear just a little bit here. Um, okay. Start Drea. Yay. What's that? It was just being dumb. <laughs> I was going to start yelling, Everybody. but I won't, I won't really do that. Everybody is jumping on. Sorry, we had a little bit of a YouTube stream glitch. So um, Gita is asking me, but the stream is up on YouTube. People are up and watching. So sorry, we had a slight YouTube glitch, but um, I think it looks like we are streaming uh, on all platforms. So I think we are all set to go. Awesome. So we have this great project from Drea today. I'm going to add this right here um, so you guys can see it. I'm actually going to pull it down. There you go. So you all look at how look at how fa fancy this is. Like this, high right? tech. We can move around high tech. So um, let me get this down here. So Drea, this is your this is all you 110 percent Drea's cuff it's like an ode it. to everything that i obsess over <laughs> yeah so it's, let's talk a, let's talk a little bit about it tell us a little bit about these cuffs and then we're going to jump in dre is going to do the demoing today which i'm just going to sit back and enjoy the ride <laughs> so like. talk a little bit talk a little bit about what these lovely things what these are all about well i mean you all know me i'm i'm a super duo girl and i love my herringbone I love any two hole bead, to be honest, but these started with my friend Kelly, who got me into Outlander, which uh, has now become an obsession. And so a few years ago, I made her a bracelet, which I posted in the group. So you may have seen it in the group. It's like browns and blues. I was trying to match the show, a um, little bit of that aesthetic and, and kind of have a woven look to it. So it was very similar to how these ended up, but without the knot and with, I think they were wider i didn't quite have the same um i don't know what the word for it is checkerboard kind of feel to it that right. this one that these ones have and so i did that that was probably like three years ago and then i just kept right. making them and i really experimented with this knot and different knots you could use um or without a knot you can easily make these without the knot you don't you do not have to do the knot if you don't want to um it was just a fun little extra something different um they're cute. I like them. But if it's yeah. too hard for you, you absolutely can do this without the knot. And I'll show, I'll show you how. I promise. Yeah. No, it's they're really great. I love both of these. And I feel like, so they're just for dimensions. So you guys know, they're about an inch and a half in width. And these you can see, Andrea has some step out. She's going to share with you how she pulls all this together. But the knot that she's talking about is this Celtic knot. Um, and that's actually how you start this piece, Drea, right? Yep. You start it here and then you work your way down. The possibilities are really endless. I mean, Drea did kind of this repeating pattern. We've got some new beads here that we added to our mix. Um, the super duos are new, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Um, these fire polish are new here. And yep. then we have a new um, half Tyla. Yep. bead here as well and so what you mentioned Drea about kind of the checkerboard look that we've got here I'm going to zoom in real tight here on these you guys though you can see them right on the website um the project map for them but you can see that Drea it's the same design in each super duos are down the center the four millimeters here and then that checkerboardy pattern with the half tilas and eight dots and here with the three millimeters and the eight dots. I think it looks great. It really looks kind of um, rich and, you know, because um, Outlanders also, they they kicked off like this big knitting trend too. Yes. You know, when she was yeah. wearing all those knits and all that yeah. kind of stuff. So I love how this has kind of that same kind of tweed 
kind of um oh yeah do you remember they did like those mitt those like fingerless glove things then too yeah oh, we should incorporate something <laughs> so good so so good so you're going to share so you've got it so those of you who are just joining there's so many people who are joining today who are like new and who've jumped in and all of this stuff so just to give you guys the lay of the land and people are saying drea that they love putting a face to the name because as you guys know drea is our customer happiness team of one there she is, right there. There we go. I'm pointing the correct way. So it's fun to be able, I think, for a lot of you are saying it's great to see Drea, um, you know, quote unquote, in person. So, yeah. um, so me, you can jump me. And that's, that's right. That's, I don't really, that's, I don't that's really do this. I'm not good at this. So that but. is not true. <laughs> and we're super excited to have you do a tutorial. You're a great teacher. But just so that you guys know, so those of you, some of you who are new to us today, you can, of course, find us at beadshop.com on Insta. And if you join our Instagram, you know that Drea has been posting little sneak peeks of this beautiful piece. Then you can also join us at uh, on Facebook on the bead table uh, in our Facebook group. And of course, you can hit like and subscribe to us over on our YouTube channel. And if you're watching live, thank you so much. And if you're watching on replay, make sure and go ahead and check out all of these resources and hit that subscribe button right at beadshop.com. And of course, you can find all of the information on the project and products from today's broadcast right on our website. Make sure that you're getting our newsletter, you guys, because we've, as always, got some fun stuff coming up for you. Now, Drea, what did we, um, what did we name this piece? This is the Highland Cuff. Is that right? Yes. Because I didn't want to fully go Outlander and call it the Outlander Cuff. So there. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I didn't want to be too crazy, just a little bit. But they are the Highland Cuff, and I was trying to think of some different Highland things. So yeah. there's, of course, the landscape, the moors. However, I think this one. moor is, is not the prettiest sounding name. So I went with fen, which sounds a little more fairy tale. Um, right. Yep, that's green and blue is fen. And then, of course, uh, whiskey, <laughs> which is, I, is this one, right? That's the, the whole reason we got those new super duos is that I wanted a whiskey colored, that perfect amber super duo. Yeah. It's really, really gorgeous in person. And then I forgot to mention, of course, the buttons are also brand spanking new. These buttons, these check glass buttons. They're so beautiful. Yeah, person. they're really, they're really amazing. beautiful in person. Yeah. And it's well, they a are really. On the too, but you got to see it in yeah, person. They're really great. So I guess without further ado, um, just real quick, you can jump over to the homepage on the website at beadshop.com. You can click right now. There's a, um, a photo of it right there. You can click through it and watch, see both of them. You can look at the project maps. You can also find them later on. If you go to projects, um, you go to bracelets and they're under Highland Cuff. And so, Drea, you've really stepped it out for us today. You've got some step outs that we're going to talk about um and how to achieve this it looks super advanced but it's not as long as you kind of follow these directions and stuff it's pretty doable right yeah and if you if you don't if the knot is really troublesome because it is a troublesome knot it's it's not the easiest knot um you you can totally skip it and just not even bother with it um if you there's other knots that you can put in instead um but we're gonna go step by step with this knot. I have a, a step by step actually in the project map, so hopefully that helps too. Um, Great. I know and this knot is not you, easy. <laughs> it's not the easiest. I mean, you could also just like, for instance, we were talking about this project earlier. You could start with, you could make your loop here, and you could bring everything under some macrame instead, yep. right? Absolutely. Or it could be a silk wrap, or it could yep. be, you know whatever you're super comfortable with starting you, those wrap um, bracelets. I'll show you one of the other prototypes that I had worked on that okay. does not have a knot so in it. That way you can I'm see. I'm going to go ahead and add your demo camera to the stream. All right. I'm so going to move this laptop. All right. Let me add that. There you go. And I'm going to highlight this one so we can see it there. There we go. All right. I'm moving over. Hello. Hello. Welcome Alrighty. to my looks great. 
table. <laughs> All right, hopefully there you are. Okay. Is this good? Can you see everyone? Yeah, okay? looks perfect. Cool. Looks perfect. So first, let me show you. I'm going to just push these to the side. This is another um, prototype. This is one of the ones that I had made um, to just test things out and see what what sizes really worked. Um, mm -hmm. The bigger the beads, the more that this is going to wave and buckle. And in, in order to keep it nice and flat, I'll hold it this way. Like it's it's not it's very fluid. Yeah, it doesn't have any. That's it's what I really love about this or anything. Up. Yeah, it's um, so nice and straight. And it is. And it's the it blade so size on the, on the wrist. The bead size is what really does it. So um, don't go for huge beads because that's going to that's what's going to make it buckle. So here is if you can see this, this is just no knot. It is one piece of leather. The whole thing is one long piece of leather. And I start here with the button loop. This is just macrame with my KO mm -hmm. thread. And then I came down and started the herringbone ladder. So mm -hmm. essentially what you do if you don't want to do the knot is have a very long length of leather. Um, and you go down, you macrame, then you ladder. And at the end here, you will add a button and flip your ends back up. So now they're going to come back this way and you'll ladder on one side back up, ladder on the other side back up. And then you go around your button loop the first time and then back right down again all the way. It's just, and it's button. let me mention real quick under the button, if you'd show the back of that, Drea, the, the cords, what you did was essentially you put a cord going from the left and then to the right through that button shank, correct? Yes. Can you see that? Yeah. And so it just goes through that button, the cord following its natural path. And then also for laddering, you've done infinity stitch on this, correct? Yes. Infinity stitch yes. the whole way. The whole, mm -hmm. whole way. This mm -hmm. one I'm actually going to say the leather actually goes only, there's only one strand of leather going through this shank. Depends on the size oh, okay. of your button shank. Sure. Um, actually, the two completed samples one of them has one piece of leather going through one has two leathers going through from either end it's just what okay. will fit um, right it's not a big deal if it's just one this is very secure i've been wearing it um for like six months straight uh almost every day and it's it's not coming off it's not going anywhere if you can and the other through it's that's great if not don't yeah. sweat it just let it just let it ride along the side right yeah, yeah. that's it okay perfect so how do we get started with this? So the materials, essentially, they're listed on the website. But essentially, I'm going to add, um, I'm going to um, stop highlighting here for just a second. Essentially, you can follow the recipe over on the website. But you're going to need those super duos for the center, some four millimeters in the semi-precious and in the fire polish, an eight dot, a half tila, and a three millimeter, plus... Yep a button. Now you can do two, your own colorways. Yeah. Yeah. Two half tilas. If right. you want the checkerboard, do, do two half tilas. Right. Two. Sorry. I see that here. Right. The two half tilas. And so you can kind of do your own colorway if you like. And of course, Drea's um, choices um, are over on the website as well. Yep. So let me, um, I'm going to solo your camera, Drea, and we're ready to go. Okay. We have I kind of set, like Kate said, I have it stepped out so that we can see each step as it goes and make um, what we always like to do an Alfie size bracelet. So this That's is just right. the knot. I'm going to take this apart and show you how to make the knot. I stepped it out next so that you could see the start of the herringbone ladder and then finally the next steps where you go up and down. So we'll go mm -hmm. over everything, I promise. We'll do it in order and everything. Uh, the knot. I'm going to start with that. Let me undo this. You will have two lengths of leather, completely separate lengths of leather. You want, I forget, um, shoot, I had it in my head. Now I forget what it was. But we, you want a longer length and a shorter length. The shorter length is going to go on the outside, which is my pink color here. I'm using, obviously, not not my colorway colors just to show you this. You're, I will look it up, too, and I will add it to the project page exactly what the length of the leather was. Um, okay. So you have two in a fruit fly, sorry, <laughs> you have two lengths of leather, a long one and a short one. Your short one's on the inside, that's blue. Long one's on the outside, that's the pink. I um, 
since this has been tied, it's a little kinked up. The clampers are going to be your best friends right here. You want them just not super separated, but slightly separated because you're going to bead in there. You're going to throw um, a row of eight aughts in there. So you want it, you want it not exactly flush with each other. If that is making right, sense. so you have that little channel. Yeah, you don't. It there. doesn't have to be quite as big as you think either. It's um, it's pretty forgiving when you ladder it. All right, is this that? Okay, I got my pieces. I have them clamped. This just helps to keep that channel open and keep them the way we want them to be. Um, I'm gonna put this next to me so that I can see what I'm doing too. All right, we're making an S shape first. Ignore this strand, this side, but with your right side, left side, sorry. I know my left and my right, you guys, I promise. We're making this S shape. And then this is, I, I honestly, I hold it down with my two fingers and I just hold it right on my project board like this almost throughout the creation of this knot. These guys are now gonna do all the work. I'm gonna move this again because now my, my hand's blocking it and you can't see it. So we're gonna take these threads now, or cords, and we're gonna go under. Let me pull it. So we're going into the bottom of that S. See how they're coming through there? Now we're gonna go back up. We're going over the bottom of the S now. Before I put it in, I'll kind of pause to show you. We're going over that and under the middle because it's kind of a woven knot. And so you're almost always, it's like going over and under, over and under. So let's get these guys through. And you want to keep your strands. If like the pink one's on the outside yep. to start, you want the pink one on the outside at all times, correct? Yes. So as you do it, as you, as you position your, your cords here, position them, you know, on the correct side, if that makes sense just like Kate said, because you want that pink strand on the outside. All right, so I've gone through there, over, under. This is probably the trickiest part. I'm gonna switch sides here. Now, we're on the back side of that S. We're gonna go over this S right here, but we're also going to go under it. This is definitely the trickiest part. So it's over and under. This is so difficult to do far away from your face. <laughs> I, <don't laughs> say I say this every episode and I have yeah. no idea how you do this, Kate. Well, I'm like such a broken record saying this, but it really, no, you got it. It boggles my mind how you do this. Okay. It's not even a so, far yeah, away so from there you go. Really is. You just go over and under, you make that the center and then you go to the left and where that little opening is, you bring the two cords up through that hole. Yeah, great. That All looks right. good. See it? Do you see what I'm doing here? I do. I'm with All right. you. All right. We're going to pull this around. We're just going to finagle it into the shape that we want it to be in. I'm hoping my hands are not in the way. Sorry, everybody. No, you're doing fine. I'm going to pull this. Now you're going to have these loops towards the top. That's like towards the top of your button loop. When you're mm -hmm. doing this, um, or after, I guess, after you kind of have the shape you want, you may want to shape it a little bit more just so you have a button loop that's going to fit your your button. Right. So whatever that, what's underneath your clampers. Yes, exactly. I know this looks super messy right now, and that's because it is. This is how I've done it every single time, I swear. It's not just because I'm on the camera right now. It is messy. It is, it is a weird little knot to finagle into place. But, oh, see that? Do you see it's coming in? Sort yeah, it of looks good. Maybe. It's getting there. You really do have to push, pull, tighten, loosen all along. And it looks so messy. And then all of a sudden, it's like, oh, there it is. It'll just all of a sudden take its shape and be like, beauteous. All right, mm -hmm. we're getting there. We're getting there. Gosh, I should make like a whole video of just doing this and making it look nice. All right. Let right. Me maybe, maybe it's a it's a good, it's a really good knot. Um it's a good knot to have in your uh in your knot uh compendium. 
Yes. All right, I'm moving these around because I noticed my blue and my pink are crossed, so I want to flatten those out. So those look good. And I'm going to switch these. See how now where this has ended up, it's it's going over. See how it's over this and this? Right. Remember, we want to do like that over under. Oh, I'm still crossed somewhere because my blue is on the wrong side. Where am I crossed? I'm crossed over here. So now your blues, which are your longest strands, are going to be in the middle, ready to go. See this V shape here? Your blues should be in the middle. Your pinks, you're actually going to just move aside and not use for a while. So you can clamp them off to the side however you want. But your blues will cross right in the middle, and then you're going to start your herringbone ladder right down the center there. I'm going to unclamper these. We'll finagle a little bit more and just make sure this looks good and even and pretty. Of course, that means I just recrossed my strands. Definitely, before you just start this, practice it. Don't don't just try to make this bracelet unless you've done this knot before, no, or like super knot queen, like maybe you are, Kate, because it is it's going to frustrate you. I guarantee it. It's going to frustrate you. Yeah. Well, the thing is, I think also you guys, when you're working on this knot, see how Drea has just two little small pieces that she's practicing with. Mm -hmm. You know, do the usual practice practice. Um, and then, you know, take it, take it apart and redo it, um, just so you feel real comfortable with it. Then you'll jump over to, um, the leather that you have for your project. Yeah. But as you can see, what Dre is doing is she's treating those two strands of leather as if they were one. So what one strand does, the second strand also has to do. The only, yep, exactly. The only place where it doesn't is really the top of this loop where you have that channel open for your right. uh, e dots. Right. Which is what I just pulled that through. But now we're pretty good. Yeah, looks great. So uh, when you're doing it with your your two that are the same color, it's it's a little bit more difficult just to see where they are, if they're crossed or not. But don't right. sweat it if they are. Even if they are crossed, it's not the end of the world. Yeah, it okay. looks real nice. And then I love this knot because it has these, I don't have a pointer, I have a pen, all these heart shapes to it. So there's like, see the point is the bottom of the heart here. Right. And then there's, this is actually another point where you have two hearts side by side there. And then if this were a point at the button loop, you'd have another heart there. I love this knot. Yeah, I love, so love you great. guys. Now you can I'm, also, this is a Josephine knot. You can do this, but it doesn't, it's a very wide open channel for beads. It's not mm -hmm. great for beads. If you crossed it kind of like we have our love knot crossed, it will work. I would just like add a dab of glue under there to, to hold that cross in place. And then you can bead down. It right. is also pretty. It's just, it doesn't, this channel is so wide and it's, it's, it's too wide for even um, tiles or, or bugles. I tried a bunch and it was a little too much, but okay, we're done. We got that knot done. Great. Congrats to us. I will leave this one. Uh, I, don't, I don't think we really need to go over how to start laddering. I think we all know how to ladder. At well, point. I would just, I would, Drea, show people where you started. Like if you grab some thread or at least show it there um where you actually started the thread with the laddering let's do it let's do it i have oh gosh you know what kate when with one of the projects you sent me it was still with a needle attached that was one of your um sharps and i had uh -huh. never used them before i always just use the regular beading needles and now it's your favorite needle um it's not actually <laughs> Oh, oh well i don't know how you do it is what i was gonna say i oh. think it's because my nails are long i think it's my own fault and my nails are long but that's what i have here i have a sharp right here um so i have my thread through i've doubled it over uh my thread ends again let me um clamper these out of the way the pink ones we're not going to worry about for a while so we can just get those 
Move to side, little guys. Go over there. We're only going to worry about these blue strands for a while. Okay, great. Ow. <laughs> See, that's what I had to like. I hope everyone caught me totally stabbing myself. Great. Oh, I missed great it. Job. Yeah. Nope, I, I fully uh, stabbed myself right in the finger. That's great. That's a great job. In case you guys Perfect. don't know, needles, needles are sharp. <laughs> they are. All right, so the tail of my threads, I'm going to tie. Um, I tie a surgeon's knot. I don't I don't know that it's extra secure, and I often put a dab of glue on it because I like to glue everything. Um, but a surgeon's knot, you just tie an overhand knot and go through the loop twice. Pull it. And we're going to just scoot it up to where we want it to be. Um, which, if you can see that, that looks to be pretty good to me. I'm like trying to look at the screen and at my, myself to see what I'm doing here. You're All doing right. good. You're doing great. I will, will continue with my use of crazy colors in the hopes that you can see what's going now, on. Now, Drea, do you attach this to anything as you're uh, doing? You can. You absolutely can. Let me show you mm -hmm. if you really want to um, get the edge of this in here. I'll just go right through the button loop with my clamper mm -hmm. and attach it to one side. Nice. These are pretty short, so I don't know if they'll actually reach to the other end. Right. Um, but you could. But you could. And then yeah, you'd, have everything, you'd have everything uh, lashed down. Yep. I don't, I, maybe for the herringbone ladder itself, I will do that. But for the rest of it, I just hold it in my hands and stitch mm -hmm. it. I don't have right. it. I don't have it attached at all. So pretend this is down. Pretend it's attached. And I've got two super duos on here. I'm going to go since I started over on my right side. I'm going to go under on the left side and back through. And again, I can't see what I'm doing because it's not close to my face, and I am not Kate Richburg. <laughs> I'm just not you guys. But so what what Dree is doing here is the infinity stitch with laddering. So she's starting on the right hand side, going from the right to the left, over and then under just through the top two holes yeah. of those super duos just there. Correct. Let me see if I could get these to stay out of my way. Clampers, man, you guys, clampers are my best friend. They are, and doing. they'll be back in really soon. It's, you know, supply chain. You can't get, you know, you can't get sinks for your bathroom, nor can you get clampers for your beadwork, but they're coming. Remember how long it took me to get that fridge? Yeah. That was crazy. All right, so yeah. I got these two in place at the top of my X where the blue is, or I guess V if you want to call it a V. So they're in place, and now we're going to go back through the bottom hole of just one, which I cannot at all see. There we go. Through the bottom. I really think I like that these these um, needles are so rigid. Like I, yeah. I really like that. You'll look at my other needles in a minute and see why I like that. But it's I think it's just because my nails are so long. But now I got I picked up two more super duos and now I'm going to go through the bottom hole of this left one under my leather pull tight move my hands out of the way and see how it just fits right in there you guys now to go back through which is going to take me uh, approximately 17 years to see these holes from this angle but back through the bottom of your first v and the top of the second v so it's kind of this little zigzag down and, and back up. So what you do from the left, uh, sorry, from the right to the left, you repeat that thread path as you come back from the left to the right. And that makes one complete pass. Yep. And Andrea, you're using 1.5 millimeter leather. Is that correct? Yep. Yeah, I sure And am. then would you rec say that that's the optimal size for this project i would say yes i think one is going to be maybe a little too flimsy i think two is maybe going to be a little too thick you can mm -hmm. absolutely use them 
you know, you do you absolutely. Yeah, experiment on what works better. But I think I think the 1.5 is yeah, honestly, the way I to go it's on kind this. Of like the perfect size for a lot of different projects. Mm -hmm. Frankly, all right. I'm gonna go through. Um, actually, you know what? Let's switch over to the next one. My next step, because that one is a little ways further done. Let's. Hot fire. And then your your pink. It looks like those pink threads, and you're gonna add that to this description. The pink threads are a little shorter, and the blue cords are a little bit longer, because that's your interior cord. Yes, I'm going to I you know what I wrote it down and I, I looked at it before I got started today, but of course I can't remember. Um, but I yeah, do. We'll, we'll I, add it. We'll add it to I'll the project. To the but project. we sell yeah. we sell our um, leather in four yard increments. So my guess is. It's not quite half and half. No, it's not. I here's what's left of the leather from making the projects, from making those two samples. I've got plenty mm -hmm. of leather left in both yeah. colors. Um, I'm I'm vaguely sure that it's two feet and three feet, one two foot length, one three foot length. But I mm -hmm. do want to double check my notes and figure that out for sure because yeah, and we'll add it to the project map, and you can find that project under Highland Cuff right on beadshop.com. It also will depend on your overall bracelet length. If you have a mm -hmm. really um, small wrist, I mean, my wrists are pretty small. Um, if, you, if you're if you average at like seven inches, I, I think you're gonna be safe going with the, what I am pretty sure is the two foot, three foot that I said. But if you have mm -hmm. a longer wrist, just err on the side of, or a, a wider wrist, I guess, not longer but um, err on the side of caution and and cut in a few extra inches. I save all my leather scraps so that I could make earrings and tassels and things. So I don't, I, I often will, will go on the side of caution so that I can uh, just be safe. See, this is, this is what happened. <laughs> this is what happened. Right, your bent needle. It's so so now tell, tell me what you're doing here. So you went, so this is your last step, Drea, is that right? Uh, se second to last, I added one more row, okay. and now I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna finish this up. I'm going under this side. See that? Pull it all tight. Make it look pretty. Adjust your threads so that they're in a good spot. Now the last one on here is gonna be one single super duo. So again, go through the bottom hole. We're gonna pick up one super duo, just one, on my very bent poor baby needle and through the other side here. Oops, if I can do it. And so that's the center line, everybody, of the cuff. So this length, Andrea's cuff, the center line length, I'm measuring it right now, is about five inches of, of beading. Now, when you're measuring this in real life for your wrist, like I put Drea's around my wrist. It's a little, it's just about a half an inch too short for me. So um, remember that the the clasp adds, it adds about an inch, maybe about an inch and a quarter. So that center strand for me, instead of five inches, I would probably make it about five and a half inches for me. So you're, and when you, when you finished with the center strand, this is as mm -hmm. long as your bracelet is really going to be because now right. you have your buttonhole at one end and your button is going to be at this end. So right. when you're making this, measure against your wrist. Take it off the tray, wrap it around your wrist, see how it fits because this is going to be it. Everything else we add to the sides, it's not going to affect the length. So make right. sure that, that this here at this point is the length that you want it to be. Gotcha. So just, That's a great way of measuring it. Just to finish this up, now we're just gonna go through only the bottom, just one little super duo, lone little dude here. And that is going to close us up and give us really easy access so that we can cross our leather strands here. And I like to reinforce, I like to go through my first and last beads twice. That's a Janice trick. Um, mm -hmm. If you want to, I think it also helps to pull this leather tighter against, you know, yeah, to get I agree. shape. Yeah. 
but this is where you're going to add a button you guys i don't have a button because <laughs> i said i only had one of each button when i made the samples and sent them to kate so add a button you're just going to put it on on either strand or if you could fit it on both strands go through the shank one way go through the shank the other way and just pull them and i'll show you um let me i'm gonna solo lay out this just real quick here Drea. i've got your sample yeah. here and you guys can see so here's that length of Drea's project so so this length that she said to measure my my i think my tape measure i don't know what happened to it so i'm using my short little ruler but it's it's about six and a half inches is the total length here and that from from this bead right here all the way to that loop and then take um a look here see where this is where drea is now that single super duo is here she's gone back and forth this strand is coming through that button shank and then this second strand back here is riding along the side so it doesn't slide underneath the shank it just rides along the top and you can see that same way here and it's really clear here you can see that one it goes just through goes both through one do you know what does it? oh okay yep that one does while you're doing that i'm actually getting up to see if i can find a button in my house i'm okay. sure that i still have one over here on so i want to show you guys i'm going to come nice and tight on this right here and i want to show you so this again there's that single super duo that drea ended with that leather crosses through that button this way and through that button this way now those strands that she was working with that strand comes and forms this next channel right can you see that so this is the side of the leather that she's done the super duos attached to this strand comes around and then the four millimeters are laddered on this side and the four millimeter fire polish are laddered on this side and again remember we're doing infinity stitch with yep. this one so i'm gonna uh bring you back here drea i got a button so while kate was talking Great. i both reinforce that last stitch and don't don't end your thread here if you have thread to work with keep it on um i'm going to slide my leather through so if it fits if both fit it's fine if one fits it's fine it's not the end of the world either way because it's going to be so close to the center you won't even notice if it is off center you think it is now it won't be it'll yeah. be fine it can you push your camera just a little bit closer, Dre, if you yeah. can? Just push that. There we go. Perfect. Thank you. I think I'm, like, I'm not focused. I don't know if. Yeah, I think so. Is it? It looks not it's to kinda... me, but it might just be me and my laptop. I don't know. I'm trying to tap the screen thing to see if it'll focus. focus right. Itself. But can you see that? So I'm just on one side. Mm -hmm. And it just hugs there. And then we're going to ladder right here. We're going to ladder up that channel. If it does fit through both, let's just see if it does. It all it honestly depends. Some of the check class buttons, they they technically shouldn't fit two strands, but some of them will. And then it depends on your leather, too. I'm going to say no. I'm going to say this one's not going to go through twice. Yeah, your leather will will also determine this because your leather, it changes. It'll change, um, you know, depending on the weather uh when it's made it'll sometimes it's it's a little thicker sometimes it's a little thinner so i got some a dots here and let's see i have some fire polish all right i'm going to unhook this because for me it's easier to not have it hooked i think if right. the if your other leathers are getting in the way I mean, that's kind of, this is kind of what I did. I just clamped them to the buttonhole and let them hang out. And now you have something to actually hang on to. Yeah, yeah. So, sorry about that. Sorry for my sniffles. Can you all see this? I'm not in the frame very well, sorry. Same thread here. 
I'm going to pick up an eight odd. I stabbed myself one more time, just FYI, in case anyone wanted to know. Stab count up to two. Doing a great job. Actually, you know what, Kate? I'm going to put my camera back up a little bit and I'm going to hold the sure. show a little closer because that way, uh, maybe sure, whatever works to, for you. Maybe I'll be able to see it better. Yeah, no worries. Me and my, I, I honestly, how many times can I say it in a broadcast? I don't know how you do it. <laughs> Go ahead and put that a little more to center of the screen. Drea, you're a little off the side. There you go. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. All right. I'm just holding this button in place. I have an A dot on here and I'm going to just ladder again. If it helps. And a little, you sorry, you're drifting off the bottom one more time. Sorry, Drea. Okay. A no. little bit higher. There we go. Great. If it helps you to clamp this leather up here in, into place, go for it. It's, it's entirely up to you, whatever is easiest. There's no right and wrong way to do this. Beating is all experimentation and just having some fun. So don't think that just because I do something a very specific, particular way that you have to do it too. All right, I'm going back through. This can get a little confusing because it's like, where where exactly do I, I put this since you have threads already over here? Do you know what I mean? Like your beads are already uh, in right. place. You just have threads in place. You just have to forge a little path wherever you feel like that needle yep. wants to fit. I'll show you on the last example, because I think that needle is less bent. Um, my little, I use my my needle to kind of help me plan out where I want that next bead to go, like exactly where it's gonna fit perfectly. All right, I think I may have messed this up a little bit. I think I have a, a loop in my thread. Yes, I do. Let's see. There he goes. All right. Now he lost my bead. Where did he go, little man? Okay. One bead down. I'm gonna pick up my next bead. I think I used two eight aughts on this and then went into the four millimeter stone or the four millimeter fire polish. I'm okay. pretty sure that's what I did. You can use one, you can use two, it'll be okay. So again, this is just infinity stitch. I'm I'm going over and under, making that infinity loop around both sides. Pulling, let's see, this looks good, like it'll sit right there. Andrea, see if you can put, put this up like a little closer to the camera lens and kind of in the center. So we can really see, yeah, there uh, a little more to your left, I think. <clears throat> there you go. So see everybody, see how that that first bead, it's kind of, um, it's there next to the button shank, and then Dre has put that second button there, and she's infinity infinity through. She's just kind of getting clearing past the button, and that's when she'll start to add her two stack. I mean, not her two stack, your four millimeter. Yeah, I got four mils. So I have four millimeter fire polish. Does not matter which side you start with, with the, the fire polish. I mean, if you want to do fire polish on first and, and stone second, go for it. It doesn't, it's not a big deal there. What, um, what you do, I just kind of wanted to mirror size wise on either side that both sides would have um, four millimeter, both sides would have a checkerboard. So I need to go under, but what I kind of do is, is hold this bead in place and see where it's gonna sit. Can you see this? So I yeah, see and go again a little more stay. to your left, Drea. Uh, yeah. There we go, perfect. Um, so I want it to be, I don't want it to come through where another thread already is. So I, I need to just decide which side of this thread here coming out of that super duo where I want it. So I just kind of use my needle a lot. And sometimes I'll leave the bead on the needle so I can really line it up and see exactly where it should sit. That looks pretty good. Let me get in there. Okay. So we're just going to do you'll that. Just, just, what? You'll follow that pathway then back back yep. through correct i already did oh you did okay that was your second pass yep that one's already gone in and out 
and now I'm on B2. So I have one pass going from left to right. Now I'm going to go back. I gotcha. To Sorry, to left. you're going from left to right. I gotcha. If it doesn't, if you always, if you have to be like always on the left, always on the right, you can, you know, make it work for you. For me, it doesn't matter. Um, I can go right, left, left, right. But if you have to always start at the right or have to always start at the left, just do that. Just move it so that you're always adding from the same side. See that? Maybe if my camera will focus. Ta-da! So you're just going to ladder. You're going to infinity stitch all the way up. I'm going to try to go at Drea's speed here to get, okay, um, because I want to get to the top so that I can show you where the blue leather is going to end and where we're going to start the pink leather. Actually, I okay. could bring it up from my last sample, from my last um, step. And Drea, again, you're, uh, just go a little bit higher, a little bit I'm gonna, higher. Um, in screen, I'm going to switch to the other, my last step. Oh, the other one? Oh, okay. Gotcha. It is all the way up and done on there. So here we go. I have, where's my pen? My pen will be my pointer. So here's where you just went all the way up with your four millimeters. Mm -hmm. Can you see there, there's uh, two A dots under there just to kind of taper in and get in under there. I'm going to flip this over. So now your last bit of, of leather is sitting here. What we're going to do is we're going to trim it and glue it into place underneath here. So they'll fit right in. I'm going to, I'm going to snip it right now. I may have snipped it a little too long. Let's see. So I'm going to zap glue it. Just add a dab of zap glue. Mm -hmm. Can you see how it's underneath there? You can angle it if you want. So it's really tapered and, and, and really hidden into place, but you really don't notice it from either side. It's just going to be glued, kind of hidden under itself in its own knot. And that blue, I keep wanting to say thread, but that blue cord is now done. And then that pink cord is where you start from the top here. And we're going to go down and ladder that way. And so you use a pull it up just a little bit. There we go. So um, you complete the two rows on the left first and then you'll go and do the two rows on the right if you want to you do not have to okay. you can you okay. can do both rows of four millimeters first and then sure. do your final rows it's entirely up to you and what makes sense you know in your own mind and your own um creativity Everyone's so when you different. so when you ladder that your second um channel of four millimeters and you go up on the right and that leather crosses underneath. Will you do the same thing? You'll glue it as yep. like you did your other one, correct? Yep, exactly. So see, I'm gonna flip it over so it'll, we would ladder up through here. When you get to the end, you're just gonna trim that end, tuck it in between these two strands and, and glue it right in place. And glue it in. And it'll be kind of hidden under the bottom of this of that yeah part of that knot. knot. Now let me well, ask you this: yeah. when you're going to add thread, let's mm -hmm. say that you're at that part, you're going to ladder, you're going to start adding that channel of four millimeter beads. How would you add thread there? Just tie another knot, just like when you first started. Grab a length, mm -hmm. you know, double it over with your needle, and tie the tails right around here. Okay. And then ladder away. We can show and that. Ladder it in. And you add a little bit of glue sometimes onto that knot, depending. You know I glue everything. I'm um, mm -hmm. I'm like a panic gluer. I'm afraid all the time that everything is going to fall apart on me. So I add just just a teeny teeny bit, just a teeny dab right. of uh, GS Hypo cement, just in case. Just in case. All right, I got the tails of my thread. We're going to surgeon's knot it. How are we doing on time, Kate? Uh, we're see. doing good. We still have got about 30 minutes of the usual time, so we're doing okay. All right. Good. Good. 
good. I'm keeping an eye on that clock. Well, thanks. So this surgeon's knot, you're doing this doubled. You make a loop and you pass the tails through twice. And see how Drea's then just going to slide that knot right into place. And that's when she'd add that little bit of glue. Let that glue sit overnight and then she'd cut the tail away. Yep, exactly. So then I have a brand new thread here. I have two threads on here, so it might look a little confusing. But brand new thread. Imagine that there is a button on this one. If it helps to make a tiny bracelet first, just like we always make little alfie size bracelets, right. go for it. Uh, alfie size bracelet. Make a exactly. small your little sampler. Yeah, make a little practice one. Okay, here I am. Actually, you know what? Let me cut these tails away so it looks a little, a few less threads on there for us. All right, now we're just laddering again. I am not in the frame, I don't think, right now. There you go. So see how Dre is holding that with her fingers and that A dot is sitting there. She's going to then go back through the A dot. Um, I actually and didn't she'll put just... it in a good spot. Hold on. Let me undo oh, okay. But, yep. And so that, that A dot is what kind of makes, I'm going to show this. Let me show that right here. Um, okay. You can see that A dot is right here in this bracelet right there and it's right there this is where she's crossed over here and here i wanted to show you where that gluing ended up you can see she's come up here um past that a dot that one is glued there and if you look over here you can see this one comes up and it's glued right there so essentially you're just crossing your leathers, bringing them down to make the new channel, gluing them off here, and then that final pink one is that outer one. Yep. That's the channel there. You'll also want to know when you run out of thread, how do you end a thread? Yeah. And I will Andrea, just... I have you back on the solo camera, so if you want to center your your piece there perfect so i'm just laddering my second bead into place here so when you're um ending a thread i just weave you know before it gets too short i will weave my thread back into my beadwork usually somewhere ending in the super duos because those are mm -hmm. so tightly woven that i'm not afraid of the thread getting uh left out there right and so basically, you're just weaving it in nice and tight as if you were doing it in a seed bead project, correct? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Pretty much. All right. So now I got my four millimeters going over here. And I would ladder the four mils all the way up. And get a little more to the center, Drew. You're drifting off screen. Yeah, I had a I had a little knot I had to get out. Oh, okay. But I got it. I got it. Ta -da. Great. So, are there any questions so far? Are we good? Or are we? Am I confusing? No, people? I think I think we're good. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. And you've got um, you also have some um, on the project map. You guys, you can consult. Uh, the project map right on beadshop.com on the project. Mm -hmm. I'll have more. I'll put I'll put the rest of my info that I'd left out, um, my lengths and everything. Okay. To finish, finish. When you've laddered from your pink, you know, your most outer down, you're going to start up here towards your button, mm -hmm. button loop, and you're going to ladder downwards. And when you get to the end, all I did was I went, you know, go through that last bead a couple times. And this is like a fake silk wrap almost. I just went and looped around and around and around to hold these leathers in place, to hold that last pink one down. I glued it, of course. I love glue. My thread is probably a little too short to really be doing this well. Third time, third stab, you guys, third. 
for those keeping count at home. All right, I would go around a lot more than that. I only did three times, but I would go around like six or seven. And then at least, I mean, I'd probably, I you'd, I'd do things over the top. And then I would just go with my needle, which is too long, back underneath those. If this were a different Under, way. underneath, underneath your wrap. Yep, exactly. I'm going to use my yep. other needle just to show that because mm -hmm. I don't have enough space on that one. But I would have gone around and around and around and then just needled underneath those wraps, pull them tight. Get them nice and tight so they're really in place and glue. My needle is, is through them, it's just on the bottom. But then I would just pull that tight and glue. And add and a little bit that. of glue. Yep. Yep. And do the same thing on the other side. Because you're going to come Let me with show the... it. Yep. Oh, go ahead. Um, no, 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 Millie no. was asking to show it on the finished piece. So I'll show that on here real quick. Mm -hmm. So you guys can see here's this. Might be a little bit easier on this one. It's all going to be under the button, too, so it doesn't matter yeah. if it's pretty or not. You won't see it. So here's this one here. It's coming around, and these are the two ends. It looks like you glued these two ends together, Drea, right, after you've wrapped. So you wrap, wrap, wrap here, wrap, wrap, wrap here, send the needle underneath, the needle underneath, then clip these two pieces of leather and glue them together so it's a single, they come together in a single piece. Yes. It just, I like glue. <laughs> That's all there is to it. I yeah. always want everything super secure. Don't over, over glue. I mean, I like to glue things just so it's, I know that it's safe. But if you overdo the glue, you might get it on your beads. And sometimes it can discolor a bead. If you mm -hmm. have like, um, like a black bead, sometimes you'll see, um, you'll be able to see like a white sheen to it. So don't, right. you know, don't douse it in glue. But I do like to use glue on lots of parts just because I want to make sure those knots are never coming untied. I want to make sure my my ends are not going to come undone. But honestly, I've been wearing this that green bracelet I showed at the beginning. I've been wearing it all summer. Um, it's been it's been a okay. I have not There's I have not filled it at all. Great. Those are those two. So I'm going to put you back up, Drea. Go ahead and if you want to lay out your little samples one more time and we can kind of see those. Yes. Now that they are messier than ever. Perfect. <laughs> I got my threads so tangled on this last one. But let's do... So what do you think the key points to remember on this, Drea, would be? Practice first. Practice that knot first. Don't let it get you frustrated and want to cry. It really just comes together out of nowhere. All of a sudden, it's just like, poof, there it is. I don't know how. Let me move these yeah, down. those look great. So now once you get to the one that's all the way to the right, when you've mm -hmm. done your line of four mils, and your line of um, three millimeters and the half tilas, then you come in and you address the space in the loop, correct? Yeah. With Which some is, beads. Once again, just your most basic laddering. Tie the ends of your thread to either or, doesn't matter, whichever you're more comfortable going from the left or the right. Tie around one one leather, and then you're just laddering all the way around with your A dots. Okay. And then anything about tension or anything here that you need to be aware of when you're doing that loop? When I don't think so. I've done this one where it has two, and it's even this is very fluid. I would say to definitely though make sure that it is A dots, and I'll show you the bracelet that I'm wearing. If you guys saw this last night. Um, and I showed Helen and Carla this and I was like, don't do what I did because this one, if I can even get it off, did not, I used um, three mils and I tried using cuts, eight hex cuts, and they don't work as well because they're just not fluid enough for it. Here we go. Oh, so what you're saying is in the loop, if it's something that's smooth, there we go. Yep. See this, I tried and it's coming apart because I I was kept meaning to undo it and then 
I never glued this one and I kept meaning to undo it and fix it and I never did. But this was another prototype where I was trying and experimenting with things. But this was an experiment gone wrong. These are mm -hmm. the three millimeter um, Labradorite that we had a few weeks ago in a flash sale Friday. Oh, yeah. And then these are ADOT hex on either end. They don't, it doesn't work very well. I don't it's because it. it's because it's squared off. Yep. So yeah. use use a dot rounds. It's it's going to make your life so much easier. The rest yeah. of this is basically the same. The rest of this piece. Look, I got thread still here. Um, it's all the same idea. It's there's a, a four millimeter stone, a four millimeter fire polish. Um, a hex cut isn't bad on this. Where I've where I've added the hexes into my checkerboard. It actually looks really pretty, but I would not do it for the um, button loop. For the button loop, yeah, that makes sense. I don't know how well you can see that, but with with the checkerboard, like in with those half tilas, cuts look really cute, and yeah. with your three millimeters, they do look cute. It's just that they don't they don't adapt well because they're so squared off. So they're so cylindrical that they don't um, really lend themselves well to going around a loop right going around so let me ask you this there's a question that someone has um would you suggest laddering the channel in the button loop first before you start with the super duos or would you do that channel that loop channel last or does it really matter it does not matter if you want to do okay. it first do it first if you don't you don't have to okay but it will not it will not affect the outcome however you do it Okay, but they, right. the only time it will matter is if you are doing one like this, where it doesn't have a knot, because this one you go around and around. So this, I ended these, this four millimeter round stone and went into the eight dots and then all the way around. So you, it, it was being beaded. Pull that like loop, one. pull that loop a little further down, Drea. So yeah, so see you guys how, if you can follow the path of the leather, the leather see how the interior of the loop the leather is coming from the sides of the super duos and coming around, right? That's that leather. Yep. Is that right, Drea? Yep. So this was my original piece of leather, the original button loop here, macrame, mm -hmm. macrame with the, the ends of my KO. And then I did the laddering with the super duos down here, mm -hmm. all the way down. Same idea, crisscrossed under here. There's the crisscross with the button loop. Actually, maybe I added the button on a separate pass. Oh no, it is. It is on this pass. If you can see, see that shiny little gold right there? That's the button mm -hmm. shank. And then came through and beaded. This leather came right up. And so I made this pass with the four millimeter stone up and around the button loop. And then all the way down, and then I did uh, four millimeter fire polish, going all the way down, and crossed again. I just went around and around. Mm -hmm. And then the only other so, thing on this one is one end. Do you see where they cross right here? Mm -hmm. My leathers cross, and I just did the same idea with wrapping around and around with the thread and gluing into place. And then these ones. And where's the last of my leather is right here. I think I did it. I think this was like, if this were the pink and blue, like we were showing earlier, this would be like the pink thread cord right. rather in here. And then that's the last of the blue. And I actually, they kind of came and I just joined them together and glued. So that blue thread was coming up and that pink one went down and I just spliced it. It's like Ali Mori splice, but Drea style yeah. way messier. And then the other end is down here at the button. It's just an end. But you don't see it because it's where the button is. Right. And when it's um, <clears throat> closed, you really don't, you can't see any of the stuff that is under that button end anyway. Because even your button. It looks really nice. It. And it has, is it the same amount of rows, Drea, or is it an extra nope. row? Nope, there's an extra row on this one. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yep. This is one of the ones that I was experimenting with. And just seeing what worked. I don't really love these are full tilas. I don't super love how they ended up because they they're not as easy to place and it's not as easy to hide. See all these gaps. 
see these guys. It's not, yeah. you can't hide them as easily. Right. Because um, they're a little, they're a little square. There's nothing yeah. round in there to help you ease. When you do the, <laughs> the half tilas in this checkerboard, it's much easier to hide any gaps or hide any flaws that might pop mm -hmm. up because it's so zigzaggy and checkerboard and these a dots added in here also helps to hide anything. Mm -hmm. So this was another prototype and I did, these are, I think just regular shadows here and they're really pretty. It's a really nice addition to have just some extra yeah, sparkle. It's a really, really beautiful bracelet. So on this one, Drea, is this two pieces of leather that you used on this right hand side one or no. is, was that just one piece? That was just one piece. Okay. So show us again where the leather started. The very top of your button loop. This is the very middle of my very long length of letter, leather would have started right here. Mm -hmm. And then both sides came down, laddered, flipped around and came up, flipped over this. And then one, since there's one extra here, one extra row would have come down and come back up. Right. So essentially what you did was you got your piece of leather and you made a loop. Yep at the top, right? Yep. So if you've got a piece, do you have a piece of scrap leather there? Oh, do I? <clears throat> Someone had a question about this, so I just wanna make sure that we've got a visual. We got a visual, you guys. We got that visual for you. Because again, if you don't wanna add that knot, the, the Celtic knot at the end, this is also a good way to just start it, right? So I have just one, I mean, this is very short just cause I just cut it for here. I have one length of leather, go to the center of it, fold it right in half and go to the center. Measure for your button to make sure it's gonna fit through your button. And that's it. Macrame, get the ends of your, mm -hmm. your KO or your HANA thread and macrame around it. And then just start laddering. Yeah, then there's your super duos. And then you cross at the bottom. You just cross, yep. right? cross, cross it over bottom. and bring it up. And at that cross, you could put your button there. Yep, exactly. Mm -hmm. I'm going to shorten this a little bit just so you could see. Mm -hmm. Get the idea in your head here. So here's the bottom. The button would be right here. There's your button loop that's now come undone. And your next row would just go up and around yeah and down and then you could start this one you already have super duos in the middle something over here and then this cord you would ladder going up the other side yeah. just cross over the top of your button loop <clears throat> and it doesn't have and to be this way either if you're if you're doing this and you find that it's you know visually something else makes sense to you just go for it I, yeah. This is entirely experimentation. Like these cuffs are a tale as old as time. You know, no, you know, nothing in beading is brand new. You know, we've I've seen these on Etsy for forever, and I've seen way more complicated knots than these that I am so incapable of doing. And I well, so turn these. so flip that one over, Drea. So with this one, just to differentiate <clears throat> with this one or the ones that we were showing, would you get your two color one with the knot? That one has definitely two separate pieces of leather that's yep. how you started that one yep for the knot two separate pieces of leather without a knot you can just use one but it's can you see one how one those are both one. the button loops there you guys so the knot is what hold what holds that together and then there's that that loop that just starts it there so essentially what you guys are doing is you're starting with that channel you start with the channel down the center you continue to cross your leather you know at the bottom cross your leather up at the top and go back and forth until your piece is as wide as you want to make it right i mean essentially you don't have to make it with all five of these channels you could have stopped with your four millimeters right yep it could have just been these three center channels. It, I could have made it wider. I could have had another row on either side if I wanted a really wide cuff. Yeah. It's up to you. Yeah. You do you guys. Now the knot though will take two pieces of leather. You can't do that knot with a single piece. No, it looks <clears throat> terrible. Let me tell you, yeah. it, doesn't, it did you, not work. It, yeah. So um, two pieces is, is pretty essential because it really helps to hold this shape. 
Right. Um, and balances so the knot is balanced. Yeah. This particular knot here, I tied this, I think, in maybe like July or August, and um, it's stayed, it's not come undone or anything. And it's it's really because there's two side-by-side -side strands that will help to hold the shape of it. Mm -hmm. And no Leslie's blue, asking mm -hmm. um, if we could do the cuff with those two-tone pieces of leather. I think it would be fine. Yeah. You would just have the two pieces, the two colors showing off. So doing it in something that complements each other would work, I think, very nicely. Yep, absolutely. Okay, well, I think that's it for the questions. Um, I'm going to go ahead and unspotlight this and spotlight us again. Oh, hello. There we are. Look at that. I'm going to move those around. Look at that, how I can do that. So fancy. You are fancy. Um, so fancy with this camera work. Well, I think this was really fun. I'd like to revisit this again sometime. Um, I really would like to make one of these cuffs. Um, I've made one of these stacked ones before, but these are these are really fun to so play around had, some more Janice nodding and I ideas. Had, had talked about um, doing a third colorway maybe in February. Oh, um, great. And I might try it. I don't know where I, oh, I might, I might do some experimentation with the Josephine knot and see if I can yeah. make that work. Cause yeah. this is a, this is one of my favorite knots. Yeah. So I, I love that knot too. I have something around here, sitting around here with that knot on it. Here it is, this bracelet that's right here that I did on one of our yes. yeah. knotted pieces. I love, I um, add those into my, um, just laddered bracelets all the time. I love the Josephine yeah. knot. Yeah, it's just pretty. Yeah, and it holds up really well. They look really nice. And this is definitely a weekend project. People are asking yeah. about the Take your time. this. Yeah, this is a project that you are going to commit uh, a few days to creating. Don't, so don't drea it. Don't do it all at once. It's not right. Worth it. <clears throat> right Helen, or only Helen had been asking me how long it took and I was like I don't want to tell you because you're going to think that you can also do it in six hours and you shouldn't do that <laughs> no you, should not no, you want to take some breaks yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. let it rest let it rest. you'll end up I have a whole bum shoulder now because of it so don't wow don't do I, keep, <laughs> I, hunch, I hunch over when I beat and I made a lot I've been doing a lot lately so that's well remember to to take Stretch, stop get up walk to, around you guys right to take that time well drea it's been a lot of fun playing around with all of these i don't know all these cool knots and all this business i'm trying to pull up um the promo calendar so we can see what we've got for next week we actually for next week and it just popped back into my mind we have i'm doing a new project it's not yeah. new new but it's one that we have not um we haven't touched in a long time no we have not we um are really excited to share we've got some new product that is coming out uh for that one um it's based on ali mori's pardon me, Ali Mori's water garden product project. So I'm really excited to get my hands on that one. Um, you guys, Kate went on a check glass shopping spree and it's I so did. good. It's so I did. Good. So we've got yeah. a few more that are coming out. So what I recommend you guys, if you're tackling this, do like Drea says, make a couple of little samplers of that knot. Mm -hmm. You know, you can also kind of plot it on a piece of paper. Here's my knot and my sides are going to go down. They're going to cross, come back up. You know, yep. you can draw out your little map. Um, this is definitely a little more of an advanced product project, but it's not something that you, uh, you can't tackle, you know, just no, start. It's not, it's not impossible. Start with, yeah. And start, you may want to even start with just a simple, do I have it hanging here? I meant to grab it. Just the herringbone ladder bracelet um, that I did a while back. Um, we've got the herringbone ladder step outs. Um, the, here it is. I knew it was here. Let me just, I'm going to pull these things off the wall. This is a really great place um, to start with this. Let me add this back into the stream. Um, is just the simple herringbone ladder. I did uh, the herringbone ladder with an A dot 
on the outside, but it's essentially the same. And you can start uh, with you know, that too. You can add those eight dots on your your center strand if you're doing the color. Yeah, your central strand would look great. So you know, start uh, small and then work your way up to this multi, yep, multi-channel laddering as well. And we're Which always you know, here, you guys. Yeah. yeah. To Email. uh to help you with any. I'll take away um, to you. Yes, that's right. So Drea. Thank you so much for sharing this. Everyone is like totally stoked by this. People are inspired. I can't wait to see what people create. So you guys do not forget, let me do my little spiel here, my little closing spiel. So bear with me uh, for the month of November, you guys, not only are we thankful for you in November, but we are thankful for you every day of the year. But here for November, we have our um, website sale. Um, you can use your thanks discount, thanks 10, 15, or 20, and your discount will apply depending on how much you put in your cart. And of course, you can um, uh, find uh, us on social media, follow us on Instagram at beadshop.com, um, at Facebook on the bead table, and subscribe and like us on beadshop.com on YouTube. And you guys, just one quick note, there was a few um, words in the chat about people um, uh, being accepted into the group. Please, you guys, answer every question or else um, you will not be accepted into the group. You need to uh, agree to the group rules. Um, we run a really great group over there. So we just want to make sure that everyone is on the same page when you jump into our bead shop group. So if you haven't got accepted, jump over there and double check your questions to make sure that every single one of those questions are answered as well as the agreement to group rules. Um, and we'd love to have you over there. Um, so of course, thank you so much for watching. You can find the information on the project and the products from today's broadcast right on our website. Go to our newsletter to sign up for the latest discounts, giveaways, and new products. <clears throat> and like I say, we've got a lot of fun things coming down the pike for you next week, including my new water garden project. So Drea, thanks for being so great today. Oh, Everyone gosh. loved seeing you. So I hope um, that you will, Drea has so many projects. She just makes we it all happen. Have a few in the more that are coming up. We have a few coming in December. So we'll, you'll see me yeah. again soon. I'll be, I'll be back. I'll be back. I'm excited. I'm excited. Um, before you. we sign off, I want to thank everybody too, who's donated uh, for the yeah. MG walk. It's been um, I actually just found today that I can read messages that people have left when they donated that I didn't see until this morning. Um, and I totally had like, I just cried. It was, I'm going to do it again. Um, so thank you everyone who's been donating. We're currently the number seven team in the country, which is awesome. Um, with our raffle, with our bead shop raffle, that is open until Friday night. So Friday night at midnight PT is the last to get your uh, donations in for the raffle. If you want to donate afterwards, you can totally feel free to, but the raffle is going to end then and I will choose a name. Saturday is the actual walk and I'm a featured speaker at the walk, so I have some things to do that day. Um, it's also my birthday, so I will be calling, um, calling, I'll be pulling names that day um, and I'll make an announcement probably in the group and I'll just, I'll post it on social. So if you're not in the group or not on Facebook, it'll be on Instagram. Um, so we'll have three winners because Janice has donated three beadshop.com gift cards, which is that's so great. Fabulous. <clears throat> well, we really, really appreciate your donations, you guys, to this um, project that is near and dear to Drea's heart. The info is all in our newsletter um, uh, about where to donate, et cetera, and a little bit about Drea's history with the MG Association as well. Um, many happy birthday. You're getting so many great comments oh, here. <laughs> a lot of, a lot of love to you, Drea, on that. So, um, but you can go to, what's the website, Drea, for the MG Walk, et cetera? I think it's mgwalk.org. It might, um, it might have changed this year. We had to make a new, let me just double check. We had to make a new website in the last year because the old, the old one was just not working anymore. Um, 
I'm actually going to our email so that I can quickly just tap the link it through. Oh, right? it's not even in today's. Jeez. <laughs> I didn't even put it in today's email. <laughs> That's all right. No, I haven't had it. All right, I'm going to put it in tomorrow's newsletter. How did I leave it out so much? I don't know what's going on anymore, you guys. I don't know if you heard or saw about all this, but I had to make a video for this. Um, here we go. I It took me it, 356 takes before it I had was, it. It was amazing, but oh, you did a great job. The final piece, I think, is fine. But uh, OK, so it's donate dot myasthenia which is m-y-a-s-t-h-e-n-i-a dot org and then from there you there should be a where a place where you hit donate and you can look up our team name or you can look up bead shop as a uh participant just type in bead so shop and it's participant. uh i'm writing a banner real quick donate dot yep myasthenia dot org spell that for me one more time m m y a s t h E N I A. Dot org. Yes. There we go. And there will be you. It'll pop right up with search participants. If you write bead shop in there. Uh, dot com comma bead shop. That's our name because <laughs> I needed it to be. And a it's uh, donate dot myasthenia dot org. Yep. yep. OK. Got it. Okay, and also stay tuned for, for the newsletter as well. And then everyone who um, enters is entered to win uh, one of our bead shop gift certificates yes. for our raffle that Janice has so generously donated. Every $5 that's donated is one chance in the raffle. Oh, that's great. Yep. Great, great. And Drea will post all of that on, yep. um, on social. Yes. All right. Well, thank you so much, Drea, for all of that. Oh, um, okay. These cuffs are amazing. You did great. And um, <laughs> I'll talk to you in like five minutes. Yeah, you absolutely will. <laughs> and it didn't take Perfect. us 356 takes. I only stabbed no. myself three times. They're doing good. All right. That's great. See? Easy you peasy. <laughs> Well, thanks everybody for watching. Thank you, Drea. Thanks to Gita and to Janice for doing all of that linking in the comments. We really, really appreciate it. And if you are um, watching this on replay, we appreciate you guys sharing and um, getting this message out across social media because without you guys, our small business wouldn't exist. So thanks so much, everybody. I will see you on Friday for Free Tip Friday. And that's all we've got. Over and out. All right. Bye, guys. Bye, everybody.